Today we got some big news for you. Some of it's like official leak stuff coming from directors of like the Kirby franchise. Possibly the greatest Kirby game ever made. Uh, we have some news on Sonic as well. That's a bit of a rumor because that comes from Zippo. And then we have a bunch of information about Pokemon. Uh, because there's going to be a Pokemon Presents supposedly before E3 per all of the industry insiders. And Samus Hunter has now dropped the details on a bunch of stuff for that Pokemon. Uh, the Pokemon Presents exclusively to me, including something to be excited about when it comes to brand new Pokemon appearing in a game uh, you might not expect. In fact, um, yeah, Samus Hunter is still... Right now, blowing up my phone um, with new information. So, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to start with Kirby because a new quote has come out from Kirby Star Allies director Shinyu Kubazaki. This quote comes from a new art book that just released in Japan like two days ago. Uh, so here's the quote. It says, and now, finally, we can move on to the next phase. I still try new things at work every day. Talking with my colleagues about where to take the Kirby series next. Together with them, even if only to please a single fan, we're planning for the next stage of our future. The team is a culmination of the best aspects of the Kirby franchise, and we hope you'll look forward to what we have coming next. Now, beyond all this, we can connect some dots with some prior Kirby news. Uh, for starters, back uh, in September when Kirby uh, Fighters came out, right, of that eShop game, uh, data miners actually went through the code and discovered references to Kirby 3D, including some 3D models for uh, certain characters in the Kirby franchise that clearly aren't part of Fighters, but could have been part of the development cycle where they were experimenting with the concept of 3D Kirby. Uh, and now that was obviously from data miners, but if you go all the way back to April of 2020, there was an interview conducted uh, where a developer and the director of the series both talked about the future of Kirby, and here's what they said. So this is from Sumitomo, who's a developer on the Kirby franchise. He said, I really want the next thing we create to be called the pinnacle of the Kirby games. I'm positive the Kirby series can become even more fun. And then the director of the series followed that up in the same interview by saying, each Entry in the series has its merits, but I want to make something that exceeds previous games. It looks like we are heading into the next generation of Kirby games. We're taking the, the Kirby Fighters, the Kirby Star Allies, all those prior Kirby games, setting them aside and trying something new, trying something fresh. Remember, this is like a second tier IP for Nintendo, kind of like Luigi's Mansion was that way as well. But then Luigi's Mansion 3 happened, and now we have an almost 10 million seller for Luigi's Mansion. Maybe they're thinking if they can be ambitious with this game, Bring Kirby into 3D. Try something fresh. Try something different. Kind of like Breath of the Wild did with their open world, like Pokemon Legends Arceus might be doing. Uh, maybe Kirby can reach that next level of popularity. Maybe. We'll have to see. Kirby games tend to sell, you know, 1 to 2 million. But maybe if they are this ambitious and it's the greatest Kirby game ever made, maybe we're going to see the best sales of a Kirby game ever made. So again, this is all stuff that seems to be aimed at coming out of development and direct quotes. So not even rumors. This is like legit information coming out. Now, next up we have a rumor on Sonic coming from Zippo. So Zippo said, uh, basically in a new post on his blog, that Sonic 3 and Knuckles is coming, which it's like the first time it's ever been re-released, uh, and then alongside a new Sonic collection as well. So I don't know if it's part of the collection or on its own. Either way, that's big news for Sonic fans, hence why I'm rocking my Sega shirt from the last E3 we were at. Uh, I had to play... I think I got this for playing um, Sonic and Mario and Sonic at, at the Olympic Games is what I got this for playing, the, the last one that came out. Anyways, so yeah, really, really cool there. I'm excited as a as a fan of Sonic. My favorite game being Sonic Lo the Lost World or Lost World, right? Uh, Wii U. I know, kind of a controversial game sometimes. I really loved it. It's my favorite Sonic game to date, even more than the classics, even more than Sonic Mania, which I also think is a really great game. Uh, but yeah, Sonic. It's, good. it's just nice to have some news on Sonic, even if it's not about a brand new game, but rather like a, you know, old school games coming back again. Uh, and now we get to the Pokemon Presents information. Again, this is exclusive information I have gotten from Samus Hunter. Nobody else is talking about this yet. Let's dive into it because Samus Hunter told me, as for the Pokemon plans uh, for the presentation in early June. Now, yes, I was already talking to Samus Hunter about some other stuff. Maybe future videos on that. Uh, but... 
obviously talking about this presentation happening in early June. Pokemon presentations, Pokemon presents before E3 when there's new Pokemon games coming happens pretty much every single time. So that's not even, I wouldn't even know if you call that a prediction. That's just, that we're getting a Pokemon something before E3. I just know that. Uh, history tells me that. Anyways, the main focus will be three titles in Pokemon Unite, the Diamond and Pearl remakes, and Legends. Alongside other small updates for mobile games like Ma like Master and Cafe Mix, and games like Sword and Shield, supposedly updates on that, uh, and other spin-off titles before possibly a Detective Pikachu 2 as an example from a different source. Uh, the Pokemon Company's plans are to revitalize interest in Unite after it was poorly received by the public. While for the remakes of Diamond and Pearl, we'll begin to show the main differences from the originals with new forms for some Pokemon and the return of some mechanics that were abandoned in the new chapters. It'll be a mix of fidelity to the original game and novelty to attract old and new fans of the series. Despite complaints from players, even these titles will not have a national Pokedex. That's already going to turn a lot of people off. Uh, this title aims at single-player experience while still embracing the multiplayer and competitive soul of the series. So essentially, like every Pokemon game, right? Uh, Legends instead. Ooh, new information on Legends. This is... I'm getting some goosebumps over here. Uh, Legends instead will be a title primarily single-player. Is a project born thinking about how it would be a title Pokemon set in an open world that follows the philosophy of Breath of the Wild. This does not mean only at the level of setting, but also to mechanics related to free exploration. The combat system will be a simplified version in the mechanics inherited from the titles of the main series, similar to Pokemon Let's Go, but will deepen it with new mechanics, mainly related to the trainer and the links with their Pokemon. While for Diamond and Pearl, we will have new information primarily on a monthly basis until their release. For Legends, we will have the same level of marketing only after the release of the remakes. And she just hit me up with some new info. Some new info. Uh, she said, also, I forgot to mention, there will be a couple new Pokemon in those games. Likely completely new. Not new Pokemon that weren't in the original games. So, like, yeah, we're talking about not Pokemon that were in Diamond and Pearl. We're talking about brand new, never made. Like, they're, they're going to hype people up with all new Pokemon in the Diamond and Pearl remix, which is going to make people, including old fans, like everyone who's critical of the game, the fact that it's going to have brand new Pokemon in it is really going to attract people because you're going to want to go capture and go catch those new Pokemon. Uh, that's, that's exciting. I mean, anytime there's new Pokemon coming, like brand new Pokemon, um, that is always hype for me. And honestly, I'm not as critical of the Diamond and Pearl remix as a lot of you guys are. Um, I'm actually okay with them as is. Maybe that makes me a shill. I have no idea, but uh, I didn't buy Sword and Shield because it didn't look that appealing to me. I actually am more appealed, like feel more more draw to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Obviously, I feel massive draw to Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's what I've wanted them to do with Pokemon for you know a couple decades, but. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm just excited in general. This is a lot of great news, um, a lot of interesting stuff. I can't wait. Pokemon Presents is kind of like the big thing that we'll be covering uh, at this channel before E3 lands. Obviously, I hope you guys decide to tune into E3 2021 right here at the channel. Not only will we have all the things happening at E3 live stream to you guys from Nintendo's presentation to Microsoft's to um, Square Enix to Ubisoft to everyone, literally all the companies at E3. Uh, we're also going to be running giveaways all throughout E3, over $3,500 worth of giveaways, a bunch of partners with us, our own money thrown into the pot for some stuff, some collectibles, consoles, games, uh, accessories, uh, controllers, all this stuff. We, we have a bunch of stuff uh, thrown into that giveaway pool, and that giveaway pool seemingly is growing every single week. I do tease some of the stuff on Twitter and through community posts, but I don't tease everything. You know, I gotta say some surprises. Uh, we did just partner with a new company that has a game coming out that's very similar to Celeste, but I can't really talk about anything besides that until it comes out because I'm under NDA. But we'll be giving away some copies of that, and I do have a review copy of it. And my word, is this game really good? If you like Celeste, this is right up your alley. So, really, really good indie games are always exciting to me. Also, 
hey, we'll have gaming competitions. You'll get to face off against me, Eric, and Smash, Mario Kart, Splatoon, whatever, uh, for prizes as well, in addition to our giveaways. Uh, and yeah, Eric and I will be also facing off against each other uh, in those games, uh, completing challenges uh, for the loser, like the Hot Chip Challenge um, or some other crazy stuff, like maybe dressing as Tingle for an hour during the live stream as a punishment. I mean... We're keeping it fresh around here, folks. All right. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from the Tender Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next video.